Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Thank yeah. you so much for joining. Thank you for so much for coming on. It's a pleasure. I've been, I've been looking forward to seeing you guys for a long time. I watch all your guys' stuff. Oh, good. Oh, great. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, it's we good. can start. Hey, that's we watch your stuff. We watch your stuff. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good, too. All right. So, Richie, let's, let's start things off. You know, thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, um, let's start off with the tour. Let's start. Hey, you're, no, no, you know, let, let's start with Richie. How's everything? Are you okay? How's your health? How's everything? Well, I've always been a bit weird, but uh, but it, no. It, all jokes aside, I, I'm very well. Thanks for asking. Um, I think we're about four and a half months into the into the recovery now, so I'm good. My doctors are pleased with how everything's happening. Uh, I've been doing like a like a cardiac therapy course. So my heart, my heart's actually fine. It's everything around it, you know, but we're, you know, my heart's kind of back to full strength and um, every, everything is good, man. Um, I'm, you know, as I said, the doctors are happy. I'm feeling good. Um, and they're, they're okay to let me go on tour and pull silly shapes and throw flying bees in the air and stuff like that. So we're just excited. And to be honest with you, it's, part of getting back on the road is part for me is part of the healing process It's part of who I am part of what we do and there's definitely a medicinal quality that comes from that so I'm looking forward to getting back on the road playing for fans and getting that treatment that only heavy music can give you you know what I mean the healing process of heavy metal I mean to be honest just just a quick side note um part of the reason that I was able to keep going and, and keep playing and, and not die uh, was because the adrenaline was going and my, the body was operating on such a high level because we were, we were operating on such a high level. It was the fans, it was the adrenaline, it was the music. So it literally was the power of heavy metal that kept me going long enough to be able to get to the, the hospital and be treated. So the metal that? heart, the metal heart, that's what you're saying, the metal heart. Well, yeah. You know, it's the power of heavy metal that kept me alive, man. So Literally. Good thing you weren't playing guitar for Enya. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be fun, too. Don't put that on Blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Richie. Um, you, you know, you're, you know you, you collapsed on stage. You're all good. Thank God, you know. Um, and now, and I guess before the tour started, you know, and, and I'm sure everybody's asking this question. You guys, a five-piece to a four-piece and then the fan backlash. Did you expect so much, so much backlash from the fans that you guys? Well, let's go back to five. Did you, did you expect that much? I and I don't mean it in a negative way. The, the, the fans were speaking, right? The fans were speaking. Did you expect that? I think it's a really powerful indication of how much priest still means, really. Um, I don't think we expected that much. <laughs> you That's know, my point, yeah. Because um, we all thought, you know, for, for, for good or bad, I think we, we made a decision because we thought it would be a good idea. You know, otherwise, we, you know, that, that was, that's the real crux of the matter. Otherwise, we wouldn't have made a decision. Um, and the fans, we knew there would be some voices raised because Priest, that's the brand of Judas Priest. And it... It has been for 50 years. Um, and the, the fans, boy, did they let us know, you know, and um, and that's fan-fucking-tastic, you know, and we listened and uh, no harm, no foul. Um, it's all back to, to as it was and uh, we're going out as it, as it was going to be. Um, it's a big thank you, really, to, to the fans for caring and uh, letting us know what they felt and boy did they let us know what they felt about it so uh so yeah all, all good all, all's well that ends well really i think even biff from saxon got involved with his discontentment so yeah i get it you know i, I think we all get it um you know i think rob's voiced his opinion on it he, you know he had the idea and again from my point of view if 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 the guys the, the guys have been doing this for 50 years they know better than I do, if you know what I mean. Um, 
and if that's what they want to do that that's what we do and it was it was on me to kind of to do that um and i would have made it happen if you know what i mean if that's if that's what we were going to do i'd have made it happen um some people would have liked it some people wouldn't have um but i, I get it that's that, and they were one of the the pioneering if not the pioneering band in heavy metal um at that time i mean you had bands like wishbone ash and thin lizzy but as far as taking the torch into that arena of heavy metal judas priest was you know were it so i think to go to a four piece at this point at a a celebratory tour of 50 years of those songs was a bit jarring to say the least so you know we listened we get it and um as i said all's well that ends well and it's because the fans they i mean they must really care you know what i mean so we can only thank them for that and uh there's an outlet for that voice. You know, the internet is an outlet for that voice, good and bad. You know, sometimes there's some some crap out there, but it, that was really what people felt and they care enough and they voiced it and uh, fair play. So here we are, we're, we're a five piece again, Andy's back. Yeah. And, and again, if Glenn can make it, uh, I know he wants to, then uh, he'll be up there as well when he can be. Okay, Richie, like I, I saw the backlash. And I'm so happy the band said, you know what? We're listening to the fans. And they did, you guys did the right thing. That's that's the most amazing thing. But in the backlash, there was a sub backlash mm-hmm. of, of people saying, well, if you're going to go out as four piece, why don't you just bring KK back? And I know you've been asked this question many times. Okay. Mm-hmm. My question to you is, what do you think would, would it take for everything to work, maybe for a one-off show, you know, in, in during that 50 year tour, what would it take for the band and KK to sort of? I don't know. It's, it's, it's not my, it's not my relationship. I, I think it's, um, it goes beyond, it goes beyond the music, you know, um, there's some stuff there that's obviously personal. Um, and it's not my, it's it's not my fight, you know. It, it's not my, um, it's not my relationship. Um, I think if it was purely music or business, then maybe it could be a money thing or it could be a creative thing. But I think it goes beyond that, and uh, it's it's up to the guys, really. It's up to the guys to sort of find out what that is, or or, or not. They don't have to. There's no there's no obligation for them it, it, it's a you know what i mean it's up to them i, I think i mean I, i've said it before if it had ended differently we might be in a different situation now but that's just not the way it ended and that's not where, where we are now um i don't know what it would take to patch that up but it's been 10 years of weirdness really and in my mind it's, it's <laughs> to say bit, the least <laughs> It's been, a, it's been a bit unnecessary and I said this the other week really and I hate to repeat myself but they were brothers for 40 years and uh, I think music aside you know pick up the phone and have a chat have a, have a pint down the pub and just catch up and be buddies again more than anything else but um, you know I, I don't know but as I said before it, it's not my relationship to to, to nurture really it's it's up to them to do to to handle but I mean I'd be more than obviously it goes without saying if Ken ever came back I'd be willing to move over or do whatever it takes it's, it's Judas Priest I'd be willing to get out or move over or wear a funny hat or whatever it, whatever it needs whatever it needs to do but it's um as I said it's it's not my relationship to to take care of really yeah, so, no, so no KK, Andy Steep. I mean, it seems like every record produced these days is with Andy. So if you were to look over the other side of the stage, those those two guys we've eliminated, who would be your dream partner you'd like to look over and see playing guitar next to if you had if you had the choice? Tony Iommi. Well, ah, that's a given. There you go. <laughs> that would be interesting. Because Tony, Tony came from Birmingham. You know, he, he gave birth to uh, you know, heavy metal as we know it, and then Priest kind of refined that sphere. You know, mm-hmm. Sabbath uh, have retired, so kind of it will kind of make sense for Tony. You know what else? You know what I mean? Like Tony, I mean, kind of he, he was the co-creator of that music. So having Tony over there, either Tony Iommi or Michael Schenker for sure. 
Um, You're wearing the shirt. There you go. There you go. As I, as I said before, I've got to be careful about wearing this because someone's going to make one one day that doesn't have me on it. They're going to make a priest one without me on it, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> but that's that's okay. I would totally understand, and I'm you know that's just the way it is. Uh, we're way past that point. That's not that's you know, not there, a worry. There, there's classic lineups, and that's just the way it is. Classic lineups are classic lineups for a reason, and I I totally get that. I was you know. But, oh, you know, the Richie, the yeah. fans have really accepted you and embraced you. You are part of the legacy now, you know. Uh, people look at you and they go, he's the guitarist the Judas Priest, the same way they look at Yannick at, uh, in, in Iron Maiden. You know, you're part of the, the equation now. That's how I look at it. It's very nice of you to say, I'm still trying to learn some of those dance moves that Yannick does, but I've, I can't get them down, you know. But, uh, no, that's very nice of you to say. I mean, Yannick has been with the band... I mean, ages and has written some fantastic songs. I think that's, you know, I think Yannick's pretty underrated, really. You know, I know he gets a lot of flack, but um, he's underrated in my mind. He does, he does a great job for Maiden. Um, but that's very nice of you to say. I mean, I'm just happy to be here still. You know, when I joined the band, it was a farewell tour. Um, and that was almost 12 years ago. So hopefully I'm, I'm doing something right, hopefully. You, know. you are, yeah. Um, yeah, that tour, that tour still makes me chuckle because they got, oh, this is the last time, Priest, I'm going to get my ticket, bought the tour program, got the T-shirt, and then then see you tour, touring for the next album. Well, do you know what? I mean, I can see people sometimes ask me what the secret is. You know, you know, now, now I'm the new guy, so can I see anything in these guys that would that I could tell is the secret to doing something for 50 years? Um, and I can I can see how it happens because. When I joined the band, it was the final tour. But when we were on the road, you get fired up and you start coming up with riffs and ideas on the road and you want to go in the studio and record them. And when you get in the studio and record these riffs, it's like, oh, we want to get out on the road and play these songs live. So then you go and, you know, and you go live and this, the cycle repeats. And that's obviously happened for the last 50 years. Um, and obviously you go out and play these songs for the fans and the fans are just welcoming and fantastic and you know it's infectious you know what i mean so that that's there's a genuine passion from the band to do what they do and then you've got the other half of the equation which is the fans the loyalty the support um and just the love really from you know again from the fans and the band and that that's kind of part of the equation of why i think it rolls on for 50 years i think if if we were able to be a lot older i think it would roll on for another 50 yeah. hands down you know <laughs> same here i wish me and alan could be a little older and then younger sorry we could go on forever all right so this tour this is the rescheduled tour it starts in march i want to promote that i want to make sure everybody goes out our good friend me and alan's good friend todd latori will be singing for Queensryche, um which we're double excited now we got priest we got queens right what, what what do you make of Queen's right opening up, what the package of Judas Priest and Queen's right. What, what, what do you make of all that? I think it's a great one. I think it's, um, you know, for the newer fans out there, they might not have seen, you know, bands like Queen's right and, and Priest. You know, we, we still obviously hit parts of the world with the band fans out there haven't seen uh, bands like Priest or it's the younger generation, you know, dad might be taking uh, their son or daughter to see bands like this for the first time so I think it's a great thing and for the older fans that might be um, going to see Queen's Right for the third or fourth or fifth time uh, I think it's a great package um, one of the, the I think the first European or UK tours I did with Priest was with Queen's Right I think it was with Jeff with, with oh, Jeff wow. Tate um, so it, it's a bit of a nostalgia thing for me for the, you know for the first time I played with Priest in the UK was yeah. with Queen's Right so mm, yeah. I think it's a great bill again great songs Great band, great package, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We're just happy to be getting back out on the road after all that, all those shenanigans that a silly guitar player caused those a few months ago. <laughs> so, so, what's it like to be on stage with Rob? I mean, everybody's still just amazed by his voice. But you're you're on stage with him night after night. But describe Rob as a singer for you. Do you know? I think Rob is so much more than a singer you know he he sings the songs but he emotes them he performs them he's, he's he's like an actor 
You know what I mean? He's like calling him a singer doesn't do him justice, if you know what I mean. He, he's a he does so he's a much man, more. Yeah. He kind of he communicates and he performs these these songs like no one else can. And uh, sometimes though, you look over and he's got this look in his eye. He's, he's doing something that's comedic or funny. So he's this. He's almost like a thespian. You know, yes, yes, yes. but he's funny as well. He's, <laughs> he's got a, he's got a great sense of humor, Rob. You know, so he's very serious about what he does, but he doesn't take himself too seriously, if that makes sense. So he's uh, he's really entertaining and great fun to to play with, and and it, that translates into when you're making music with him as well. He's serious about what he does, but there's an element of fun in there as well, which is which is kind of rare in heavy metal these days. You know, everyone's very serious. Uh, but I think Priest still contains that element of fun. Um, and they always did. You know, you, you watch those old Priest videos and there's a, there's a bit of tongue-in-cheekness about it. It's, they're very serious about their music, but there's, a, there's an element of fun in there, which I think, you know, as I said, is slightly lost in a lot of heavy metal today. I think, I think Rush had that same thing. Very serious, but they could have that sort of humor, you know, amongst each other. And, uh, you know, oh, I agree. It, yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. And again, don't get me wrong; it still exists, but mm-hmm. it's 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 rare, and I think only a certain few bands can pull it off. Agreed. Yeah. Let me ask you this: so you're you're going on tour. You've had a lot of time because of COVID, and of course your recovery. Have have you guys settled down and said, you know what, we're going to write some tunes for the next album? Are you finished? Do you have a a, a a timeline for a new album? What's going on there? It's a really that's a few questions there. Um, well, you know. High level, high level. <laughs> well, we actually started, I mean, I think since the Firepower Tour, we all went our separate ways like we do. And we've always got ideas coming up. You know, me, Rob and Glenn, we sort of start to put ideas down. Um, and we got together in, when was it now? I, I lose track. Of, the, the time's gone weird, hasn't it? It's like, I think we're in 2024 now. I can't remember. <laughs> exactly. Um uh, was it 20 when when did the, the first lockdown? 2020 it started it started in 2020 in january 2020 the whole covid 19 thing and uh yeah so it must have been years. okay so that's right so it, it was early 2020 we all got together me rob and glenn and, and uh, andy sneak was there as well and we pulled all our ideas together and started the first writing session so we we got together a, a batch of songs um that were by no means finished but they were developed enough that we could call them songs you know so we could give them working titles you know so there were um they, they was there was demos you know if that makes sense yeah. so we had we had a batch of demos and then since then we've been trying to find an opportunity where we can all get together and develop them further and, and record them but obviously with the restrictions of the lockdowns um and the pandemic you know we, we want to be together as a band to iron out those creases. If it's, you know, if the three of us got together with a group of songs and we played them together, it's like, oh, that one needs a bit of fat trim there. That's too long. Or we need to put some more guitar solos in there. Or, you know, it becomes evident when you play together what songs need, you know. So we've been looking for an opportunity to do that. And it's been tough with the travel restriction. We can't, you know, some of us live over here, some of us live over there. Sure. So it's been tough. But, uh, you know, we, we have started recording some, uh, and, and getting it, you know, put together um, with those restrictions uh, because we want to get it done. But it's obviously taken longer than we'd like, really, because of because of the pandemic. But um, obviously now we've got the, the tour coming up and hopefully we can get on the road and stay on the road and do some dates. So we've got to work around that as well. Um, so I wouldn't like to say when it's going to be finished, when it's going to be out, but we are working on it and we, we are dedicated to getting it done getting those songs down and then getting it out to the world. But obviously we just don't have a, we're nowhere near a release date, but, um, but we are dedicated on working on it and, uh, and getting it done to the best of our ability for sure. All right. Good. All right. I think, uh, I think our time's coming to the end. I just want to say you're looking fit. You're looking good and good news that you're feeling great and looking forward to that heavy metal shot of uh, medication. <laughs> Thank you very much guys. Rich, Richie, do you have a few more minutes or do you you have to go to the next interview? I'm good. I'm good. I want to ask you, what songs would you like to play that you've never played? Reckless. Uh, off the Turbo record. We actually, we had Reckless on the shortlist of songs to play on the 50th anniversary. 
and we played it and it you know some song some songs you we, we had to leave it out because it just didn't some songs you play i'll tell you what also we played we played solar angels um yay that's good yeah wow that is going back yeah when was it i think it was on the firepower or the redeemer of souls rehearsals we played um we rehearsed solar angels and for some reason it didn't feel you know one of those songs that sounds great on record and it probably sounds great live as well but for some reason it didn't feel right when we were playing it it was a weird thing mm -hmm. and and reckless was the same but i'd love to play reckless live um a lot of people ask me what about ripper era I'll play one song from the ripper era is there any song from the ripper era you'd love to play live yeah there's, there is a song i think it's called um is it hell is home yeah, Hell is Home. Great song. Yeah, yeah. One on one. Hell is home. Um, yeah, th those albums get a lot of love, you know. Um, it's, it's always difficult. They're long songs as well. On the, you know, so it's always tough to, if, you know, if we've got an hour 40 and we're going to put in one of those, we've probably got to take out two. So do we take out, you know, the Sentinel and Desert Plains and put in Decapitate? For me, it's a no. You know what I mean? No disrespect to anyone, yeah. but I, you know, as far as a, as a set, you know, so it's, it's a careful balance between what you put in and what you take out. Um, but I mean, could we do it in the future? For sure. Uh, on, on the Firepower Tour, we, we did different legs and we put different songs in. So, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, you know, if everyone wants to do that, then, mm -hmm. you know, I'm up for it. Um, but yeah, that, those, those records get a lot of love. So, um, and it, is it Hell is Home? There's another one as well. Is um, Cathedral Spires songs. is a good one. Yeah. Cathedral yeah. Spires oh, Cathedral is a good one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some great songs. And I guess my last, last question, and we'll leave you, is the musical direction. Okay, you had firepower firing off on all cylinders. Are, is this going to be, are the demos sounding like Firepower 2, or is it just some other era of Priest? That's a great question, you know. You, I'm full of great it's, questions. It's, I'm full of great questions. You should be. That's what you do. You should be. I'm, I'm proud of you. Um, well, you watched the show. We didn't want to disappoint you. Full of great questions. No, I'm, def I'm definitely not disappointed. By the way, before I forget, can I get one of those shirts? I want, yes, I want yes, yes. Just um, if you can send them to Jane. I'll, I'll send me. Uh, I'll send you a shirt. Are you going to be at the show? I'm going. We're going to be in Montreal in Montreal show, okay. and and right. that's the and uh, we're going to. We're going to be there. I'll either give it to you there or I'll send it to uh, the publicist, the publicist there. Um, yeah. And, and she'll, okay. she'll give me your address and I'll send it to whoever. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Alan, show thank the shirt. You there you go. What size, what size are you, by the way? Uh, medium. Okay. I got a medium. Beautiful. Thank you guys. Okay. So stylistically, it's two parts to the question, I think, because you, whenever you start a record, you never know how it's going to turn out. So you, you might start with an idea of what it's going to be. And as it kind of rolls on, it comes out something different. So you don't quite know. But um, And then also it's really hard to kind of sum up your own mu music, I find, because without sounding really pretentious. But um, I think this one, it, it, it stands on its own. It, it's not Firepower 2, I don't think. It's... Uh, it, it's its own thing. It's its own animal. Um, if anything, I would say it's a bit more progressive in places. Um, and in places, it's got a bit more of that killing machine swagger. Oh, um, nice, nice. You know, like and I know everyone says, oh, is it the, new, is it the next painkiller? Or is it the next, you know, whatever. But I, I don't know if they've ever done it, but I know we, we've never done it when I've been in the band, we've never tried to recreate an album. It's, it's the way we've tried to recreate an album that stands on its own legs. So um, I, I think it's definitely a little bit more progressive than, than Firepower. And as I said, it's in place, he's got a little bit of that, that killer machine, angry swagger attitude going on. Um, but then again, as I said, we'll wait and see what it turns out like, because it could turn out completely different. 
Richie. And, and that's the beauty yeah. of Priest, right? You, you, you know, they did Turbo, yes. they did Nostradamus. The, they, they, they don't often repeat themselves. They're always kind of shifting as they go along. So, Yeah. And because of that, the beauty of that is as well as a, as a guitar player, is you can take from those kind of, if you've got an idea that's bluesy, you can put it on the table because of, you know, the more bluesy elements of the career. If you've got something that's a bit more synthetic sounding, um, put it on the table because turbo, you know, parts of Defenders are a bit, you know, synthy here and there. So you've got like, um, it's, it's kind of freeing as, as a writer. You can put stuff on the table. Um, and because of that vast gamma of music, um, it fits it, it or it's got a chance of fitting in somewhere, you know, so it's a, uh, it's good fun. So we'll see. Richie, you know what? The fans are proud of you for doing such a great job with Priest and rein reinvigorating the band. Uh, you know, thank you so much for being on. You're welcome anytime on the show to promote anything you want. We're going to get you that shirt. We're going to see thank you in Montreal. Guys. And yep. uh, thank you so much again. Thank you guys. And thanks to the fans, you know, thanks to the fans for being so welcoming. And just quickly, to the fans as well, I mean, through this whole process, you know, what happened uh, with, the, with the heart issues and everything, there's been an incredible incredible yeah. kind of reaching out of the fans, sending their blessings, sending their wishes. It's been overwhelming, really. Uh, so a big thank you to them. Obviously, when I joined the band, they, they welcomed me in. Um, they, they, they took a chance, really. You know, um, they came and, and saw me right back then, and they welcomed me in. And right up until now, they, they've just been unbelievable so thanks to them through the whole through the whole time period really and uh we'll see them soon and hopefully a long time into the future all right thank you so right. much well keep watching the metal voice richie <laughs> I, will, I will totally <laughs> and next time i'll do one i'll do it in the, the i'll do do it in my shirt okay there you go. that's right. all right that's, that's a deal a medium in the mail all right yes Talk thank you lads thanks, thanks, richie. Bye. Bye. take care now